Hi, everybody. This is Zen Honeycutt of Moms Across America. It is July 10th. Very excited to be here tonight with some lovely ladies from all across the country. We are Moms Across America, a national coalition of unstoppable moms. Our motto is Empowered Moms, Healthy Kids. And our mission is to empower millions to educate themselves about GMOs and related toxins, to offer orga uh, organic, non-GMO and organic solutions. And while we are supporting local leadership, we are creating healthy communities together. So we support all kinds of actions all across the country, including joining into Fourth of July parades, movie nights, speaker series, um, all kinds of things, just get togethers at at the uh, playgrounds and all of that, where you can pass out our awesome flyers and uh, show movies and all kinds of things. So we're very happy to tonight to have a group of women from all across the country. Tonight, I'll, I'll introduce them in just a moment, but I wanna cover what we are going to be addressing tonight. Tonight, we're gonna be talking about the very, very important and historic listing of glyphosate on the Prop 65 California list. Very important. I'm going to talk about, yes, everybody can, yeah, <laughs> we're going to talk about that, what a historic win that is for us and what that means and what that could mean and going on forward in the future. And then we're also going to talk about the movie release of Communities Rising, which I hope you've all seen. Has everybody seen it? Yep. Yeah, awesome. And uh, please share it. We've had some great reviews on that. We'll be talking about that a little bit. We'll also be talking about the new approved RNAi uh, GMOs. Uh, which has been covered by uh, Sayer G. We'll address that, his blog, in a little bit. And, um, and then I'll just be addressing a, a local event that's happening. And right now also Robert F. Kennedy is um, talking about vaccines on a, a show, and I'm sure we'll be able to see the, the airing of that later. So I'll just those things, and we'll also hear from some of the lovely moms that are on here tonight. So first of all, I'm Zen Honeycutt from Mission Viejo, California. I've got three kids that have gotten better by getting off GMOs and organic. And Lisa, introduce yourself, please. Hi, I'm Lisa Germo from Menifee, California. And I also had two kids that got better and healed through food and removing of toxic chemicals. Awesome, thank you. And one of your sons, I'd like to point out, he was vaccine damaged, you believe, right? At the, in the military. Yes, because he went into the military perfectly fine, got all his shots, which I didn't have him fully vaccinated at that point. Um, within six months, he had um, Crohn's and uh, colitis and had to be honorably discharged, uh, medically discharged from the military because he couldn't be on the cutter boat. Um, so I don't know that he um, sees it that way, but I'm putting the pieces together as I'm learning and I'm going, oh, did this happen? And it did. Thank you, Lisa. And he's better now, right? He is. He did it through food. Um, eating one thing at a time. Um, sorry to be so graphic, but he was up the other end blood for about a, a year. Um, wow. So we started with one fruit to see how it interacts with his body. And now he's a totally plant-based uh, diet um, and has no issues. He's able to go and maybe get a bean and cheese burrito without being in pain. So, um, yeah, he's in for inspiration to me. Keep going. Great. So. Thank you, Lisa from Menifee. Awesome. And Alana. Hi, everyone. I'm Alana Stern from West Bloomfield, Michigan. I have three young boys who I think I keep pretty healthy on an all-organic, non-GMO diet. Awesome. Thank you, Alana. I met her in Detroit at the Jewish Food Festival. It was awesome to meet you there. Our journey has taken us in many, many different cities, and the best thing is to meet people from all across the country and all around the world that are protecting their kids. Thanks, Alana. And uh, Amber. Hi, everyone. Hope you guys can hear me. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, good. I am from Seattle, Washington, um, but I've lived all over the West Coast in the last few years. And I have two daughters, and I also have an autoimmune condition, and we have all radically changed our diet and kept ourselves out of medical bankruptcy by switching to 100% organic. I'm also a chef and uh, involved in local politics. Awesome. Yes, Amber has taken on a position of leadership. She knows all about food and very good point. Eating organic costs a lot less than medical bills, right? So I like yes. how you mentioned that keeping yourself out of medical bankruptcy. That's something that everybody in our country 
could benefit from if, if you choose to eat organic. It supports everybody in the entire country with your health bills as well. Thank you, Amber, for being here. And I see, is that Isabel from Connecticut? Yes, it is. Awesome. Would you introduce yourself? Sure. My name's Isabel Minozzi, and I'm in, I live in Roxbury, Connecticut. I'm originally from uh, Montreal, Canada, though, so forgive my uh, grammar mistakes. Um, so, and I'm, I have two kids, and um, I am co-leader for uh, Health Choice Connecticut, which is a group of, a grassroots group that helps to protect parents uh, by uh, telling them their, their rights, and um, we're, you know, very active uh, with legislation, and um, yeah, we're just a big bunch of uh, mom warriors, and I'm really excited to get involved with Moms Across America because, you know, the poisons are everywhere, so we got to get rid of it. Awesome, and again, thank you, Isabel, for coming two hours to be with us in the Groton Parade in oh, Connecticut. My pleasure. My oh, pleasure. Oh, it was, was so fun. great. Yeah, just, it was so uh, great. We, we, she took this great photo, which unfortunately you're not in it because you took the photo, but I'm going to yeah. my post this on yeah. Facebook pretty soon of us in front of the entire naval group. Uh, it was a submarine base. And we have this giant banner that says, China's military food is GMO free. Why not ours? Yeah. And, yeah. And they were very surprised to learn about this. That was, we saw some, some interested looking faces, didn't we, when we talked about that? Mm -hmm. Very much for so. Sure. It was great. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for being there, Isabel. And Ann Temple. Hi, everybody. Uh, Ann Temple. I live in Hartford, Wisconsin, outside Milwaukee. Um, I've been working with Zen and Moms Across America for about four years now, I think. Um, and I have two adult kids, but I have actually seen their health issues get a lot better now that they're finally starting to listen to me. <laughs> and by going organic and mostly plant-based, um, my youngest has overcome a lot of health issues, as have I. Um, going plant-based for me was also great and organic, so um, I want to spread the word. Uh, that's what we're doing with Moms Across America. Great. Thank you, Anne. She is a powerhouse. She helps us with all of our graphics and website, and um, we just could not be who we are at Moms Across America without Anne. Thank you, Anne. And Lori, our board president from Washington, can you introduce yourself? Hi, yeah. So I'm Lori Olson, and I live in um, Port Orchard, Washington. And um, I've been in the parades here in my local town for this was our fifth year, and we had we had a great time. I just got the the photo to um, our helper today. So um, anyway, it's my kids and I, we, we've all had a big change in our health since we got off of genetically modified food to the best of our ability. We still now and then get um, probably a little bit of it when we've gone out to eat, but we're very, very careful about where we go out to eat when we do that. So, and I've just gone plant-based. Um, I've been trying it for, th this is my third time and I've gone um, 55 days one of, one of the times. So um, I'm trying to go 60 days all in a row, and, but it's not just plant-based. It's I have to stay off of citrus and nightshades. And, but I've noticed a huge difference in my health since I've done that. And it's just, I'm just eliminating the things that I have a reaction to. And it's made a huge difference in my health. So that's awesome. what I'm doing. Yes, and we shared, Lori shared her whole story, um, and we posted it on the Facebook, Moms Across America Facebook page, if you want to see her video about how she lost 25 pounds through this elimination diet, and um, she's done lots of other great things with supporting leaders all across the country to be in parades, so thank you very much, Lori. Sure. Awesome. Yeah, and, and Nanette is on with us. Nanette, do you want to introduce yourself? We can't see your video, but do you want to say something? Maybe she has her sound off too. So that's okay, Nanette, if you get your sound on later and you wanna jump in and say hi, Nanette is from Washington as well. And um, she's been very active. One thing I wanna say about Nanette is that I was so happy for her to share that she's been to every single one of her town hall meetings for the past 13 months. Yes, that is so awesome. This is an example of a mom getting involved, making a difference. It's absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Nanette, for uh, sharing that with us. It's very inspiring. Okay, so great. First up, we are going to um, talk about 
this incredible win, Prop 65. So what happened on July 7th, last Friday, is that it became official, Prop 65. Uh, in California, there's a list called Prop 65, which lists all the carcinogens that can impact uh, human beings in California that they're exposed to through either food or restaurants or um, you know, environmental uses. And finally, glyphosate, after 40 years of use, has been put on the Prop 65 list in California. And what that means, I'm gonna go into in some detail, but I'm gonna share, um, um, well, first I'll share about, then I'll go to their website so you can see a, few, a little bit of the wording. What that means is that within a year, all of the companies that are 10 employees and over that sell products that will expose humans to glyphosate will have to put a warning label on which says this product contains a chemical which has been known to cause cancer and um, I believe it's endocrine disrupting effects or birth defects, right? And so they will have to put that on the package. Now, they're telling us that the EPA, OEHA is the name of the division of the EPA. It's called the Environment, uh, Office of Environmental Health Hazard Assessment. They're telling us that this will most likely not affect food because, of course, the food manufacturers don't want it to. Nobody wants to buy a package of pita bread that says this product contains a chemical known to cause cancer and birth defects, right? Nobody will want to buy that. But the fact is, it does. The majority of conventional wheat now, because it is mixed in grains, and so a lot of the wheat out there, there I know that people are saying, oh, it's only 3% or it's only 30% of wheat that's actually sprayed with glyphosate. Well, the problem is, is that those that wheat goes to granaries and distributors. It's all mixed together. So it doesn't matter if the Texas people are not using glyphosate, if the North Dakota people are, and they go to the same granaries, we are still being exposed to glyphosate through wheat through um, very high levels in wheat, in oats, in garbanzo beans, red lentils. If you see the book, Poison Food of North America by Tony Mitro, which exposes a 7,800 test done by the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, a governmental agency that did this testing, you will see the very high levels of glyphosate on the grains, um, legumes, and, and seeds that are sprayed with glyphosate as a drying agent. They're not even GMO. They're just sprayed with glyphosate as a drying agent before harvest, and those residues do not wash off, and uh, we eat them. So uh, that is what's happening. It is on our food, it's in our water, and we are being exposed to it. Now, so this, this listing means that within a year, the companies, again, over 10 people will have to put a warning label on it. If they don't, I want to share exactly what will happen. Let me share my screen with you. See right here. So you can see here, let me just make this a little bit bigger. I don't know why I'm not able to scroll down here. Okay. So here where it says, so we, so what it just was talking about right up here was no safe harbor level. What that means is that um, right here, the safe harbor level is what we're discussing next. So they've put it on the list and then they have to come up with a, no safe harbor level or no significant risk level, NSRL is what they call it. And that's why we went to the California EPA and shared with them that we want zero. What they're proposing right now is 1,100 micrograms per day, which is ridiculous. It's like 3,000 times more than we know has been shown to cause liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in Michael Antonio's and Sarah Lini's study, um, which is a precursor to cancer, right? And one out of 10 Americans now have nine non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It's absolutely crazy. We have an epidemic going on. So never mind the cancer, right? That's just that's just one that we absolutely know about. And and there, it is carcinogenic as well. There's many studies showing that. So the this no, NSRL means that the a person who's exposed to that amount will not be at risk of cancer. And they've determined 1,100 micrograms per day. But that the problem is that is for a 150 pound man. It does not include other uh, methods of exposure, such as your neighbor spraying in your backyard or water or whichever, it's just in a food product. The other problem is it only takes into consideration that one food product. So if a company produces orange juice, um, but they don't produce wheat or bread, a pita bread or wheat, they don't have to take into consideration that a human being is gonna be probably be eating wheat or oatmeal or other types of foods that are going to expose them to glyphosate. They only have to take into consideration their food and that level. So, hey Zen, yes. how did 
how did they come up with this 1,100 micrograms? That's a very good question. Yes, they cite a study. Um, oh, darn it, my memory is escaping me right now. Um, but it is in the, the name of it is in the recording of the, um, of the, the OEHA meeting, the hearing. But there's one particular study that they, meant they reference. But there are other studies that show that rats developed tumors at 30 micrograms per day. So we addressed that when we met with officials from, we met with officials from OEHA and California EPA. And uh, we asked them why weren't these other studies, for instance, Woodall, Wood et al. And uh, another one I think called Woxy or something like that. There are two other studies that show much lower levels of uh, glyphosate that did cause tumors. And so that question was raised and they will be addressing that. The other thing that they're going to be addressing is that per their own code of regulations, they're supposed to consider epidemiology studies, which is human studies. And they did not do that. They do not reference any epidemiology studies in their um, uh, ascertainment of this number, the 11 micrograms per day. So somebody's making noise. Let me just mute Amber. El Ellie, Ellie just got on. Okay. Hi, Ellie. Hi, Hi sorry, gonna... guys. Hi, we're talking about mute me. Hi, great to see you. Ellie from Washington. Thank you for being on, Ellie. I'm in the I'm backyard. In the backyard. It's noisy. Okay, that's all right. I'm just going to mute you for a second while I finish talking about Prop 65, okay? Perfect. Perfect. Okay, great. So, um, so they did not reference any epidemiology studies, and they have to do that. Uh, that's their own regulation. So what we're hoping is that they will come back with a much lower level, specifically zero, as a uh, safe level of glyphosate to be exposed to. And the reason why we're saying zero is because glyphosate has been shown to bioaccumulate. And that means any tiny amount will bioaccumulate in the body, in the bone marrow. And uh, therefore, when we know it, levels such as 0.1 parts per trillion, or sorry, one part per trillion causes the growth of, uh, stimulates the growth of breast cancer cells, then, you know, when you're talking nano amounts, any exposure is going to build up in the, the body, in the bone marrow, and, and well, cause harm over time. Zen, there was that one woman who was speaking, and to, to give a, um, an idea of what one part per trillion was, she said it was one drop in the equivalent of 22 Olympic-sized swimming pools of water. Thank you, Anne. Very important addition to the conversation. Yeah, one drop in 22 Olympic swimming pools of water. That's all it takes to stimulate the growth of breast cancer cells. And when you think about how much Roundup is being used in Napa Valley, Sonoma Valley, Mendocino County for growing grapes, and the fact that they have, I believe it's anywhere between 10 and 15% higher levels of breast cancer uh, there, you've got to wonder if it's not the use of Roundup that they use all over the vineyards there. So, uh, so very tiny amounts of glyphosate, it's clear, right, are, are harmful. That's why we want a zero level. That's why we went there to the OEHA and spoke. And they are determining that right now. They are assessing all of it. We had thousands of people that wrote into them. They have to answer all of those comments. Over the next few months, they will be getting back to everybody and they will be announcing whether or not they're going to um, continue with that level or if they're going to address a new level. If they, if they pre present a new level out, then we have to go through the comment period all over again. So this is gonna take months, right? But once they do, here's what happens. Once it's on the list, um, so first of all, if there's no safe harbor level, but that's not what we're going to do because they've already, they've already said, they've already named a certain safe harbor level, right? And so they're going to determine that there's something. Um, but who enforces Prop 65? So the California Attorney General's Office enforces Prop 65. This is the thing. Any district attorney or city attorney for cities whose population exceeds 750,000 may enforce Prop 65. Any district attorney or city attorney. Any, in addition, any individual acting in the public interest may enforce Prop 65 by filing a lawsuit against a business alleged to be in violation of this law. Lawsuits have been filed, yes, by the Attorney General's Office, district attorneys, consumer advocacy groups like Moms Across America, right? And private citizens, any of you, and law firms. You don't even need a lawyer. You can just file. P penalties for violating Prop 65 by failing to provide notices can be as high as $2,500 per violation. That means per food, per food item per day. So if you know that, and this is, this is just in California right now, okay? But everybody can use this everywhere. So if we know 
that a certain food contains glyphosate and, um, and the amount exceeds the, the NSRL, then, um, then anybody, any one of us can file and complain and, and put in a lawsuit there. And we could, by the way, make it very public because we have a, a good platform thanks to all of you moms. So now we don't want to have to do this. It's a pain in the butt, right? We want the food companies to please go ahead by themselves and, um, and stop, right, and, and stop using pro food products that contain glyphosate. We don't want to have to sue and go through all that trouble, but we will if, if they don't. And, um, and the, the way that they're going to have to determine, by the way, if they have to put a label on regarding the, the level is does a consumer um, consume that, um, that level of glyphosate? Let's just say it's 1,100, or let's just say they lower it down to 300, I don't know, right, or 30 micrograms per day, and they, they follow that rat study from Wood, Wood et al. So say it's 30 micrograms per day. Does a consumer consume that amount over the lifetime, their lifetime of consuming that product? Now, that is very good because it bioaccumulates, so you can add up. We can add up. It's 2%. It's either 1% or 2% bioaccumulation in the bone marrow. So if somebody is exposed to 26 um, well, it's 26 parts per million works out to an orange juice, 2.2 micrograms per day for a three ounces in a, in a, in a toddler, a, a 22 pound toddler. So 2.2 micrograms per day added up over time, right? Adding up in their, their body and consuming it three or four times a week. They're very soon, very quickly going to get to that exposure of, let's just say for instance, 30 micrograms per day. But if, or let's just say zero, right? They are very quickly gonna get over that level of, of zero and they will have to label their orange juice that it does contain, um, contain glyphosate. Now, I'm using this example orange juice because we have found glyphosate in orange juice. And we know of the companies, we have tried to inform the companies, but we have gotten letters back from the companies and I don't know, I don't believe it's because it's the wrong addresses, Lisa, right? You went on their websites and got their addresses? Yeah, I did went up, go on their website and got these addresses. So I don't understand. I'm going to have to uh, look into that. So I don't know if it's because we put our name on there and they know what we do, but we got all of these letters back. So oh. we are going to be emailing them and letting them know that we found glyphosate in their orange juice. Um, and give them a chance to respond to us. But um, just have you know, everybody, you have got to drink organic orange juice because the levels are ridiculous. And um, we're, our children are being poisoned when they wake up in the morning and drink orange juice if they're drinking conventional orange juice. And this is because they're spraying it in the citrus groves. And then what happens? They destroy the fungus in the soil. They destroy the microbiomes in the soil. Then because the bacteria are being destroyed, the fungus, sorry, not, they don't destroy the fungus. They destroy the microbiome of the soil, soil, the bacteria which normally fight fungus, and because they can't fight off the fungus anymore, the fungus is, becomes an overgrowth and it attacks the citrus trees, and now they have this huge problem of fungus in the citrus trees. So um, what they don't know is if they stopped using Roundup, that their soil would regenerate and they would use less water than they, they do right now. Their, their orange trees would be healthier and they wouldn't need to use so much fertilizer and they would save costs on Roundup. So um, it's time for the, all these huge food companies that are producing, that are buying oranges from these citrus groves to encourage those farmers to switch to um, non-toxic chemical farming methods, which they absolutely can do. Okay, so any questions about the Prop 65 listing? It, would that affect any spraying around town about law? To file a lawsuit? Well, that's a good question. I think if you could prove that a person was being exposed to over the no significant risk level, like if you were sprayed and you could somehow prove, um, there is somewhere that I found that dermally there's a certain, they, they uh, assume a certain percentage that is absorbed through the skin if they're exposed by the skin. So I'm going to write that down as a question to ask a lawyer. Um, but I think you would have to come like in direct contact with it. I don't know how they're going to measure drift. But right now, this just affects employees of 10 uh, 
companies with 10 employees or more that expose somebody to that level over, I mean, I, so I suppose so, if they're going to be exposing human beings, you know, like say a landscaping company, is that what you mean? Yeah. Uh, no, I was talking about uh, us citizens personally, but now that you bring that up, that is a good question. So if I was an employee of a landscape company with 10 or more employees, would I be able to turn around and sue them because this is the product that they are, you know, product of choice? That's a very good question. We, they would have to somehow be able to, sh well, no, we don't have to show it. It doesn't say anything in there about we have to prove that we're being exposed to a higher level, does it? It just says that you can file if they don't, if they don't have a warning on it. So I would suppose that that would say yes, but I will ask a, a landscaper about that because workers are definitely being exposed to this product, mm -hmm. right? City workers are definitely being exposed to this and landscapers and people in their backyards as well. So. I think so because my, my backyard is a ravine and so when I see the city workers and I go out and chat with them, they have no idea about right. this poison. And, and some of the workers are like, really? I was like, yes, go. Moms across America, go here, go here, read up on it. And so I think people still don't know. Yes. Yep. They still don't know. And thank you. It's a very good point. Everybody, you can go to momscrossamerica.org, go to our materials page and get our Roundup alternative flyers. They're green flyers. I don't know if I have them right in front of me right now. They, yeah, they look like this, except they don't have the hole in them. They're green flyers like this that you can get that say the alternatives that can be used um, besides Roundup on them. Okay, momscrossamerica.org under materials. Any other questions about Prop 65? No, okay. Awesome job, everybody. I just have to say, you know, 9,000 comments. It was the highest number of comments that they'd ever received in recorded history. Wow. This is a, you know, it's a really big deal. And it was really, by, I want to acknowledge the California Guild. Um, there's Cat Fury and Diana Rude and Bob McFarland and all the, Jessica Denning, all these amazing people at the California Guild. They, they used to be our fiscal sponsor, right? So we are now our own independent um, nonprofit, but it, it's, not because we didn't want to be in partnership with them. They are awesome people. They worked so hard. They um, really worked hard to, to initiate this. And we are absolutely thrilled that all of our supporters sent in comments and emails and called and did all kinds of things to let the California EPA, OEHA, know that they have support in doing their job, that we are supporting them. They need to do their job. They need to hear from citizens because, believe you me, they are hearing from Monsanto. They are taking meetings with Monsanto. And so it's very important that we citizens show up and, and comment and speak up and, and make this thing happen. This was, it, this is really enormous. I hope everybody really gets how important this is and what this means because people in every other state and in every other country around the world can now say California has put glyphosate on the, on a carcinogen list and you should not be using this. This works for every single person in every single state in every single country to go ahead, use this, use what California has done to get glyphosate the heck out of your town, okay, right now. And this is it. So that's why we had the Roundup, uh, return Roundup day on Friday, but you can return Roundup any day of the week, take it back to your hardware store, tell them you do not want it, it is a carcinogen, they should not be selling it. We have heard that Lowe's and another hardware store will not take it back. I find it very funny that they won't even take it back. Um, but, you know, if it happens to be left on their property, then, you know, they have to kind of get rid of it. Nobody that's um, on here has actual Roundup in their house. Oh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> but you can go to your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, and say, right. listen, I'll get rid of this for you. you know? That's what I had posted is that, you yeah. know, this is a great opportunity to go to your neighbor and take their Roundup from mm -hmm. them and turn it in for them or, and talk about it. So... Yes, and you can let them know that this has happened. You can go with gloves on your hands and a plastic bag. And thank you, Anne. Look at that. It's official today. Yeah. Glyphosate is on the California Prop 65 list of carcinogens. And it was uh, Linda McGuire, McGillan or something like that. I'm sorry if I'm saying her name wrong, who came up with the random act of kindness for her classmates, for her students to return Roundup. So it was her idea to do this. I thought it was fabulous. We need to do a national day on that. So you can do this all summer long 
ask your neighbors, ask your friends, ask your um, mother-in-law and father-in-law if you can return Roundup to the hardware store for them and, and use that opportunity to ask the manager to stop selling it. So yay, everybody give yourself a round of applause. Woo! Thank you so much, everybody. All right, great. So next we have, um, I'm gonna share another screen. So hang on a second. Um, Anne, you made it, oh, exit full screen. Okay, I'm gonna get out of here. Okay, so next we're going to talk about, one second, the, um, wait, let me change this. Sorry. The release of our movie, can everybody, everybody can see that, right? Um, Communities Rising. Um, I just like to share as of, um, I believe it was this Friday, we had close to 15,000, 14,460 people view this movie. On, on YouTube, it says like 11,000 something, but we had another, another um, version of the movie that when we first put it out, it had over 25, maybe 2,600 views or something like that. So we've had nearly 15,000 people see the movie and in a, in a short period of time, I don't know, like a week or two. And I just found out today that the other movie, um, Food Evolution, put out by the GMO proponents, has sold 911 seats. Aw. <laughs> Aw. Aw, poor people. Yeah, the movie that takes my, uh, what I've said out of context and cuts things out, and I've asked for my part to be retracted, to be taken out. They will not agree with me. They will not do that. Um, and they took other people out of context as well, like Marion Nestle, she's asked for her part to be removed and they will not do that. Um, I'm pretty sure Jeffrey Smith is not too happy with what, how um, you know, they used his, what he said. So it's clearly a pro GMO movie. I don't wanna give it any more attention than it needs to have. Um, but if you have friends or family that are going to see it, just tell them that please not to waste their money. It is totally pro GMO. The, the company that, um, the, the, the nonprofit that apparently backed this, um, we have sources that say that Monsanto and Dow have funded that front company. So it's, it's definitely funded by industry um, that benefits from selling GMOs and, and toxic chemicals and poisoning all of us. So um, that's, yeah. So that's enough about that, but very exciting. Thank you all for sharing Communities Rising. We're really thrilled to have that movie out there, highlighting the amazing things that people are doing all across the country. Obviously, I'm not a movie director. It, was, it is amateurly shot, but I feel that it's very authentic and it really shares um, who people are and how awesome people are across the country. Um, anybody have any questions that they wanna ask or say anything about Communities Rising? It was, it was well done. I loved it. Thanks, Lisa. I appreciate it. I just wish you were in there talking about how you got Roundup out of your town. So I forgot to get your, your story. Well, we're just gonna Community to Rising, the sequel. Yes. yes, yes. Well, I am going up the West Coast too this summer. So I wanna get more film footage from people in California, Oregon, and Washington. Some very important activists that have really rocked and rolled it around this country. So I'm excited. Is in. Yes. Just a question, is there not some kind of lawsuit that you can take out against Monsanto to, um, to have them remove the, the stuff? No, because I signed, a, I signed a release, and, uh, but uh, what I said to them was, I'll get to see it first, right, the cut. And they said, oh, yeah, we'll get to show it to you, because Jeffrey Smith does that. He, he signs a release, well, but they show him the cut first, and they didn't, they didn't honor that. Well, that, that's, that's not legal, in my but opinion. But I don't I, think I don't that part was in writing. I just trusted them that they would show me the cut, and that was my mistake. Yeah. So they don't okay. legally I'm have just, to. Yeah, yeah. Okay. they don't legally have to. And so, yeah, don't sign anything. Don't let people interview you. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I did tell them they did not have my permission to use footage in a, in a public space, but they said that, oh, we have, it's a public space. We can use whatever we want. But that just goes to show, you know, who they are. That, you know, that's their integrity issue and that's, that's their problem. And um, I, know, I know what we're up to and I know what we're doing. And um, clearly, you know, we have a, an audience that's, I don't know how many times more than theirs. So we're, we're reaching people and we're making a difference well, where they are. I was at a march against Monsanto in 2010 in New Zealand. You were, awesome. Uh, even, even further back from that, you know, maybe even 2009. So, I mean, um, like, I think they started in 2013, though, the March Against Monsanto, the same year we did. 
But anyway, mm, you were you were there right. in the beginning, right? It was quite a while ago. Anyway, yeah. 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 Awesome. Well, thank you for being there. It happened all around the world. Yeah. Yep. That's awesome. Okay. So communities rising, please share it. It's on YouTube. It's on our website. We would love to have many more people show it. We believe it's going to be showed on GMOs revealed, which is coming out soon by Jeffrey Hayes. He's the also one that did vaccines revealed. So um, very exciting that it'll be shared um, more as well. And okay. So next I'm going to share about, I don't know why I have this on my screen, but um, so next we want to share. So this is, G, uh, Sayer G's article. Unfortunately, um, the EPA has approved Monsanto and Dow's RNAi corn. So this is a different kind of GMO. It's not DNA altered, it's RNA altered. And what that means is that they silence a gene. Instead of taking a, a um, toxin from one species and injecting it into another species, what they do is they edit and out and they silence a certain gene in the, um, in the RNA. Um, all of this is SmartStack Pro and um, they, it's a critical gene within the root worm, right? It causes its death. It's stacked. So what they're doing is they're making it so that um, it's, it can be um, resistant to many different toxins and, and it silences it right? Think about how the silencing of it is particularly um, dangerous because you don't know what is going to do inside of the uh, human being. Hang on a second. Where is that? Um, RNA insecticide in a plant intended for consume, uh, human consum consumption. We don't know what that is going to do. And they did, here it is. Okay, sorry. Once a silencing effect is initiated, the effect may be inherited. So this is called epigenetics. It can be passed down. The biochemistry of this process varies in depending on the organism and remains an area of active research with many unknown aspects. Nevertheless, it's known, for example, that human cells can maintain the modifications necessary for TGS, creating actual or potential epigenetic inheritances within the tissues and organisms. In some cases, the dsRNA pathways induce RNA-dependent DNA methylation and chromatome changes, that's TGS, that persists through reproduction or cell division, and in other cases, cytoplasmic pathways remain active and descendant. So in other words, this can be passed down. And, and I don't want food to silence a gene in my grandchildren. That's all. I just don't want that to happen. I think they have their genes for a reason. I think they're supposed to be doing what they're supposed to be doing. And um, that's just not okay with me. So that's what's happening. Um, just happened recently. We do need to, I feel we need to take action. We need to do something about this. But at, the, at this point, there's so much happening with um, within this administration approving GMOs and being on the side of the corporations that um, I understand is going to be very, very challenging. And I choose to really uh, be more active in educating the consumers. If we don't buy it, they can't sell it. That's my perspective continuously. If we keep buying organic, then um, we can make a huge difference in that sense. Okay, so I can't answer many questions about this because I do need to be more educated about it, but it is um, what I do know about it and what I have read from scientists about it is that it's extremely concerning. So um, that's what there is. Anybody else want to say anything else about that? I don't be too. No. Well, uh, I guess. Um, I mean, Can you say your name? Can you say your name my, for everybody my else? Name Aiden, my name is Aiden Kelly. I'm from New Zealand. I specialize in uh, the cultivation of edible mushrooms using uh, urban and industrial waste products. I also uh, write uh, music about activism um, and I, I'm very invested in, in making a change in this world for the better. And I, I guess what I always come back to when I, when I look at genetic modification is um, nature made things the way that they are for a very specific reason. And um, the deeper I look into ecology, the more that I understand this. And uh, I guess uh, corn is a prime example of the dangers of genetic modification because corn is wind pollinated. So uh, if you if you modify the, the genes of a corn plant, then the only natural outcome is for that gene to spread to the entire species of corn. 
So uh, basically, in essence, one day Monsanto will own corn as a species, probably also wheat and 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 whatever other plants that they they modify. They will literally That's what own plan. these plants as yeah. a species. That's their plan. Thereby controlling our food supply, um, and and thereby controlling world economies. Um, so regardless of what what genetic changes they make, it, it really, in terms of law, should not make any difference because you are basically tainting the genome of a species. And, and to me, that's just genocide at, at, at its deepest level. Yes. Um, and thank you. Very good point. And it's, and it's not just harmful to us, which is, which is to moms, you know, the biggest point there is, but also they're doing it so that they can own the technology. And as you're saying, own the food supply. By controlling world populations. Yeah. yeah. So... I mean, I, for a fact that uh, the, the that Monsanto and the United States government have a revolving door between uh, oh, yeah. leading bodies of the the head of Monsanto and the head of the United States government, so um, you can kind of see that uh, the world power that be, which is the United States government, is actively trying to um, basically make other uh, world governing bodies succumb to their their might and their control. Um, yeah. Yep. Well, I guess perpetuating the new world order. Uh, yeah, yep. that's, that's my opinion. I, I don't want to go too much into that, but yeah. Well, you can see from the action that's happened this past week at G20, right yep. in Hamburg, was just tens of thousands. I don't know how many tens of thousands of people that were there protesting corporate control. You can see how there were seventy thousand, if not millions, of people that rose up in Italy this weekend on July eighth against the vaccine mandates. People yep. are rising up against corporate control. We will not put up with it. We know it's happening. We know we have a long go a way to go to stop it, but yeah. people are waking up and they are taking action and they are saying, we will not put up with this anymore. You will not poison my child. You will not poison me and I won't put up with it. And so- I mean, at, uh, at the end of the day, companies are not gonna sell you anything you won't buy. That's what it comes down to. Well, yeah. and that's why they're trying to force the mandates. In Italy, they're they're requiring like an eight thousand six hundred dollar fine if they don't for if, if they don't uh, vaccinate their children or take their children away from them. So a lot of yeah. people want to leave Italy now. You know, this this is what it's coming down to. They're they're going to see that this is this is not going to work. Well, I mean, that's a bastardization of human rights when, yes. when you really look at it carefully. Yeah, because it is. I mean, absolutely. All you got to do is find it, follow the money trail. I mean, like, let's look at the history of these people. I mean, for, for goodness sake, Monsanto manufactured Agent Orange, which Vietnam is still paying for. You know, their, their children are still coming out deformed. Uh, yeah. I, I, there's no words that I can express to, to say how wrong that is. Yeah. And, you know, and it's perfect that... These guys, um, these guys are making our food. Yes. And it's not, it's not right. Trust, there's yeah. no clean bill of health there. Yeah, and Aiden, it's perfect that you're jumping in here into the moms conversation. I absolutely love it that you're willing to be here with a bunch of moms. Um, it um, just this goes is to show. This is yeah, so Anne, Aiden is Anne's daughter's uh, boyfriend. So um, we're very excited to have you on. But it, we, I want to point out though that this is this is you are you are representing one of many young twenty year old something twenty year old millenn millennials that are. Yeah finding out about this and that will not take any guff. I mean, you, you're, you know what's going on here. And by I mean, example, like, I we met, have genetic modified or organisms. We won't allow it into our country. It, it right. is just not acceptable. And, 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 and not just in your country, but you as a young person, you'll, you're saying no for yourself. And, and that is very important. And I, I have to say, because you're here, I met a young 20 year old something man at the airport on the way back on Friday um, to California. And he is a strategist at Cargill the largest yeah. food company in the world. And he had a shirt on that said cover cropping. And he said that all of the big guys, all the food companies are sitting down in Iowa discussing regenerating the soil, protecting the soil yeah. through cover cropping. Okay, and well, I'll just give you guys a little bit of my background. Yeah. I specialize in food forestry. So that's awesome. um, ecological, uh, e ecosystem-based food and resource production. It requires no pesticides, no chemical intervention. Um, it's basically designed to encourage uh, parasitic species that feed on pest organisms in the system. I mean, you can walk out into the woods in Wisconsin. And I mean, me and my friend, Steve, you want to come into the shop, Steve? Me and my hey. friend, Steve, have, we've, been, we've been picking uh, black raspberries all day. And uh, we've been mashing them up along with some mulberries and making some nice wine. I mean, it's wow. going to take a couple of weeks of food, but it's 100% organic. Um, I've not added any yeast. I've basically just mashed the berries and let the uh, wild yeasts Wait, on the outside ferment. Can you yeah. say real quick? I'm going to come live with you. 
<laughs> oh, please do. Come to yes. New Zealand. I'm just about to buy some land. Want, I, want, I want Aiden to say really quick, because we are we have to be you know, yeah. talk all night. But uh, Aiden was t talking about the orange, the orange groves. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so quick. in the, the food forestry texts that I've been reading for the last couple of years, okay, so I have this two-volume series of books called Edible Forest Gardens. Mm -hmm. I really recommend you look this up. Edible mm -hmm. Forest Gardens, okay. volume one and two. And so okay. um, one of the things that presented um, was that uh, using compost teas. Or like, do you guys understand the process of making yeah. compost tea? Yeah, you don't need to play right now, but yeah, go ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like spraying, spraying a foliar feed of compost tea encourages positive microbial uh, communities on the leaf surface, which helps to regulate uh, parasitic populations of things like fungi and stuff like this. So it was yeah. applying it to the great, the great producing industry, the wine industry, because uh, blight and like this, you know, like stuff like that is, is a really prevalent thing. Um, powdery mildew, and so it, it's been shown to um, regulate and limit populations of powdery mildew on leaf surfaces and uh, impart uh, uh, basically like a symbiotic um, parasite resistance to, to the plants. Basically, yeah. saying it's a great alternative to glyphosate. Yeah, it's a really yeah. good alternative. <laughs> Sorry, so, yeah, it's a really yeah, good so alternative to, to chemical great, fertilizers so and, and poisons. Thank you very much, Aiden. So this is an example of the future, a young man who is taking interest in this, taking action, who's educating people. And I, that's why I wanted to tie in the guy from Cargill, who is 20 something years old, who agreed with me that Gabe Brown and Joe Sal Salatin are killing it, in his words. He agrees that they're doing a great job in farming and he's a strategist at Cargill. Very, very excited about that. The, the, are the youth and our um, and, and, and current generations, right, the upcoming generations that will be controlling the world, a lot of them are taking notice and are taking action. Thank you very much, Aiden. I've got to move on to the next couple of uh, One things. last thing to add. Um, there's been a lot of uh, study on trichoderma. So trichoderma is a par parasitic fungus. It's also very good at um, controlling pests in the environment. So Cool. So, Sounds like you need to talk to some of our farmer friends. We'll hook you up with them. Great. All awesome. Right. I'm going to go take okay. berries. Thank you very much. Bye. Okay, thank you. So um, I just want to show, share one more thing before we go. We've just got a few minutes. Hang on, share screen here. Okay, so tonight, at the same time we were on, thank you all for being on, uh, Robert Kennedy was on the Tucker Carlson show, and called, yeah, Carlson show. And so please look at, I'm sure they'll post on their Facebook page. He was on Fox. I mean, this is awesome. He's talking about mercury's, mercury in vaccines and toxins in vaccines. Um, we all know that glyphosate is in vaccines now. Weed killer gets in through the tendons of the animals. Um, so please look that up and uh, make sure to check that out. Also, I just have to add next Wednesday, I'm going to be at a WOW talk in San Diego. If you know anybody in San Diego, please um, have them come to this talk. We're going to be talking about GMOs and, and glyphosate and health and um, all kinds of stuff. So I just want to... Will they be, will they be webcasting it? I don't know, but I can see if somebody can record it. You know, I'll see about that. Um, also, I want to put out there that, let me stop sharing this. Um, I want to put out there that uh, we are driving up the West Coast, as I mentioned earlier, through um, Northern California, Oregon, and, and Seattle. And uh, it's a short trip. It's only two weeks. So we kind of like go up and then spend a few days in a couple places to come back. Um, so if you are along that route, please check out the email that I sent out with the dates. Um, it, it, if you didn't open it, please go back and look at your emails from Moms Across America. I think it says West Coast Tour in the subject line. Um, or just, you know, private message me or Facebook uh, message us at zen at momsacrossamerica.org and let me know if you're in Oregon, um, Northern, Cal Northern California, Oregon, or Washington, if you would like us to stop by. We are happy to do, you know, a movie screening or um, just a gathering, a breakfast round table or a dinner round table at an organic restaurant. It would be really, really awesome to, to um, see you. And let me see what else. Oh, one other thing. I know there was something else. Anybody else have anything to add? Is anybody Coming. going to Washington tomorrow? Isn't there a uh, public comment about uh, for a, how do you say that? Chlor oh, chlorpyrif yeah. chlorpyrifos. Um, I don't know if anybody that has, I slipped through the cracks for me. I just got back from vacation, my family's on, on Friday, so that I missed, but thank you for bringing that up. So there might be a public hearing on chlorpyrifos. Yes. 
Okay, so everybody should look that up in, if you're in the DC area, right? So this is, the, this is the chemical that has been shown by numerous tests to, cause, to be a neurotoxin, numerous. And uh, it was slated to be banned by the EPA mm -hmm. and our current administration decided that that wasn't good for Dow, for Dow Chemical Company that makes the chemical. And so they decided to lift the ban. And this is completely insane. It's not safe for anybody. It's not safe for the workers or the farmers or for us. And it's totally ridiculous. So a lot of people, especially, um, I believe Center for Food Safety and some of the other um, environmental groups are fighting it because it, of course, affects wildlife as well. So yeah, please look into that. Google chlorpyrifos and Washington and public hearing. There's other things that are happening too. I know I had one in the back of my mind and I just forgot it. Anybody else have anything else do you want to bring to our attention? No? Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I also want to add that it was really fun being in parades this year. If you weren't in a parade, totally okay. I know it's hot. Some of you have done it many years in a row. Um, but do consider uh, Labor Day parades or holiday parades or Memorial Day parades. Consider a different parade. It's really fun. I, I've, I've gone to a different parade every time. And that sort of just makes it new for me. I'm reaching new people. I can't tell you how many people did not know what GMOs were. And we passed out at least 2,000 flyers. So I was um, going to say, you can plan for World Food Day in October because people are starting to plan that again. So Right. Yeah, World Food Day. We got to think about what it is that we want to do for that, <laughs> for sure. Um, Good time. Yes. And, and that time, yeah. On the parade issue. Um, th there's a lot of people that are that go to our local parade that that's what they do. They go to parade after parade after parade in, in the Washington area. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to start a Facebook group that's focused on parade entries so that we can help each other with all that because it is a process getting accepted by the parade officials and you know what what happens in the parade like you need to keep up, everybody needs to stick together. There's a lot of rules. And so I could help, I mean, I've learned enough about it that I could help people out with that. So if we can yeah. have a focus group for parade entries, I think that'd be a really cool. So thing. is that okay if people join the MAM leaders page, right? M-A-A-M -A -A leaders page. Uh -huh. Is it secret or is it just a group? Do you remember? Can people request to join it or is I it totally it's secret? Secret. I think we want people to be actual members on Moms Across America Right. On our website before they come into that group. Okay. Because, yes, so, but I think that even with that, we need to have like people who really want to do parades, just parades, because it's, yeah. a, it's a different thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it does take time to fill out the application and to think about coordinating, having people in, but it's super fun. It's totally worth it. It's so effective. You reach so many people. I can't tell, I just cannot stress enough how effective it is. So um, please, if you want to get more support in that for Labor Day or holidays or Memorial Day, uh, we want you to join the group. So first of all, go to our Moms Across America's website and, and join it. Become, you know, there's a place that says log in through Facebook, click on volunteer. Okay. And so we send the volunteers out different emails usually than we send out other people. And, um, and you can email us or contact us through the website to say, please add us, add me to your MAM leaders page. But we're not going to add anybody to the MAM leader page if you're not a volunteer for Moms Across America, if you don't have a real Facebook page, and if you, you know, you basically haven't gone through some vetting. So you have to yeah, definitely know some people we know and, you know, all that stuff. So, um, but we do want you to be a part of this group and to we want to get feedback from you and we want to you to support you and what you're doing. So please do join the M A A M leaders page, ma'am leaders page, but you, you got to go, go through the website first. Good point. Okay. Also September, the heirloom expo is happening September 6th, 7th and 8th. And we want you to be there if you can, there's usually about 18 to 20,000 happy organic people, 200 speakers. Um, I am going to be on a panel with Robert F. Kennedy and Vandana Shiva. So I'm very excited about that. Yay. And I also have my own talk and we're going to be talking my, the focus of my talk is going to be different this year. It's going to be a new talk for me. It's going to be about how to communicate effectively with your family and loved ones about GMOs and toxins. Cause that's one of the number one things that people complain about is, Oh, my sister just won't listen to me about this or my mother won't or whichever. So it's going to be, we did a, a preview of it. Every, if some of those of you remember, we were at the empowerment workshop with Susan 
I'm going to be using some of the methods that she's an expert communicator that um, she has taught me, and I will be sharing that with uh, hopefully a, a, a full house. I'm very excited to have a, a good-sized crowd, usually at the Heirloom Expo, and um, reaching a lot of people there. So, and, and by then, I should hope to have pre-sales of my book. So I'm working on that, and I hope to be able to have pre-sales by then. It might not be out until January just because of the way the publishing world works, but um, uh, hopefully, definitely, you know, pre-sales before Christmas. So I'm very excited. I have a great editor. She's awesome, and she's watching everything, all my videos, all my blogs, all my stuff. She's, like, getting in our world, and she is completely helping to um, bring out the best in everything that what we do. So um, I want – oh, that's what I wanted to add. Thank you. So if you have any testimonials, anything that you want to say, that you want to be included in the book, I just have a short window of time, and I ask for two things. One is just send me a little blurb, right? A little story, how your kid got better, or how being a part of Moms Across America has benefited you. Lori, you for sure need to do this for me, okay? <laughs> so, um, I mean, and all of you, really, it would just be wonderful to have a little blurb from each one of you. And also, if you have a kid that got better, um, we have this great new initiative that she has inspired um, to celebrate our healthy kids. So we want to hear from you, like your kid before this happened, and then now, you know, this is the way my kid is. And it would be great if they could say it, but if they can't say it and you need to coach them a little bit, sit them on your knee and just do a short video, you know? Hi, my name is Lori, my name is Anna, or whatever your daughter's, you know? And, and your daughter can say, before I found out about, my mom found out about GMOs, and toxins, I had rashes, my stomach hurt, I couldn't sleep well, you know, whatever it was that we went through. And then, you know, mom could say something like, and then, you know, I found out about Moms Across America, or I, I watched Nana Roulette, or I watched Robin O'Brien's movie, and I shared with my daughter, you know, what happened. And then the daughter could say, and now I feel this way. I feel better like this, or I sleep better, or I don't have any rashes, right? So it's kind of the both of you together or just your daughter. I mean, it depends on how old the kid is, right? They could do it by themselves too, but th we have to have the before and after. So what about, what about my 22 year old daughter? Go for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Give us, give us, we just need some video testimonials. I'd, I'd like to start off with little kids, but um, if we need video testimonials of people saying before GMO, you know, before I, my mom or I found out about GMOs, this is how I felt. And afterwards, and we need short videos like, two minutes, less than two minutes. And then we're gonna feature one kid a month. We're gonna celebrate healthy children. I think this is an awesome idea. We're gonna celebrate healthy kids. There's nobody that can argue with anybody about your kid getting healthy. Can't argue with that. This is what happened to our kids. They got healthier. So, um, so I ask you to send me a written testimonial of what you want in the book, just you, know, you writing that out. And then maybe after you write that out, that's a great way to sort of script out what you're gonna say in your, um, in your short video, but don't script it, script it. Just say it, just be comfortable and just say it. It doesn't have to be memorized or anything, okay? Most important is that you're looking at the camera and, um, and that you just say it. Does that sound good? Sounds yeah? Really good. Awesome, now let's celebrate our healthy kids. Let's celebrate our he healthy family members. It's a little over six o'clock, so I wanna close. Does anybody wanna say anything? Any, any news that you have before we go? Anything that you, you wanna share? Uh, at the food festival this year, I'm going to be running a Moms Across America table. Yay! Thank you. Uh, we'll make sure that you're totally loaded with all the materials that you need. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to order some, but hopefully, I mean, they have, last year they got over 5,000 people at the festival. So yes. it was a really good festival. They had music and chefs and instruction and, and community groups. So this is the Detroit Jewish Food Festival. Right? Michigan, and, Michigan Jewish Food Festival. Oh, yeah. Michigan. Yeah, sorry, Michigan. So I'll and, be running a table. I'll be doing it um, in the family section. So I'm going to have like an activity for kids to do while I talk to the adults and hand out the information. Yay. What so, date? Tell us the date. It's August 27th. And what's the website? Oh, you know what? I don't know. The organization is Hazon, H-A-Z-O-N. Hazon. H -A -Z -O -N, yeah, Hazon.org. Yeah, it'll be on there. That's awesome. Great job. And please bring over some of the Why Eat Organic flyers yes. to the vegan table, okay. the vegan Jewish people, because they are not entirely getting that it, we don't need to just eat less meat or be vegan or be vegetarian. It has to be organic too. You can't eat 
GMO soy, folks, and think that you're eating healthy. It's just, you know, or eat all kinds of wheat that's not organic and consume all that glyphosate and all that hummus. By the way, hummus, whether it was organic or not, was highly contaminated with glyphosate. I would not eat any hummus or garbanzo beans right now unless I knew they were from a different country. Sorry, vegans. I, vegetarians. I would also add to that, too, that you should look at the two to 300 different food additives and sub products that are also made with corn and soy and a yeah. lot and that's kind of the problem with a lot of vegan foods is they're using a lot mm -hmm. of different fillers and starches and things to help bind dancing gums and they are not organic and they're highly inflammatory yeah thank you very much and this is not to be against or going vegan or vegetarian we just watched this great movie what the health right we totally get that our health can can get definitely better by eating vegan or vegetarian but it's got to be whole food it's got to be organic it's got to be healthy. Okay. Anybody else? Any news? Events happening, coming up? I'm going to be doing a sustainability fair at a, at a local park. I have a table for that for Moms Across America. So Yay. that'll be in August. In August. Um, Thank you. I'd love you. to run a work on edible mushroom cultivation as well. Um, so like I said before, I'm from New Zealand. I specialize in edible mushroom cultivation. If there's uh -huh. anybody uh, be interested in uh, doing like an online workshop, it, I mean, it's quite content heavy, but uh, maybe, maybe we could talk about organizing that in, in one of the future. An edible uh, mushroom workshop. Awesome. Yes, um, so we, we basically use like uh, waste products. So like uh, coffee grounds from cafes, um, tea bags. So how would they oil. contact you if they want to do this? Um, we can go through Anne, I'm sure. Okay. Can so we go through Anne? Yeah, so yeah. just contact us through the website. Uh, contact us through momsacrossamerica.org if you're interested in an edible um, mushroom workshop. If you want to know what mushrooms are in your neighborhood and uh, your woods and well, uh, harvest them. So, just to know? clarify, um, I'm, I'm teaching people how to cultivate oyster mushrooms. Oh, cultivate uh, mushrooms. Okay. Yeah. Great. It's not okay. a, it's not a wild harvest okay. workshop. It's, okay. It's just, wild okay. harvest is a bit dangerous. Um, but okay, I can not wild harvest. Cultivate your own point. mushrooms, grow your own mushrooms in your home. Contact us through Moms Across America. We'll hook you up with Aiden. Awesome. Anybody else? Any more news? Okay. Well, thank you very, very much, everybody. It's always such a pleasure to be with you. Have a wonderful summer and um, we will still be meeting, but um, if I, yeah. Oh, I will be on the road August, um, in the middle of August, but we should be meeting up before then. So again, yeah, if you know anybody in California, Oregon or Washington that wants to meet up on our trip, it's, it's August 12th through the 27th, something like that in the middle of August. We hope to see people then. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Great to see you. Bye. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.